So to summarize active and passive transport at least, if you remember simple diffusion is just the movement or diffusion of particles from a higher to lower concentration or down the concentration gradient through the phospholipid bilayer directly. And the only types of particles that can do this are nonpolar particles such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, fatty acids, and some other nonpolar molecules such as steroids. Now, polar particles, however, cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer. Therefore, they will have to rely on a process known as facilitated diffusion down the concentration gradient as well. Okay? And they can either move through the cell membrane using something known as a channel protein or a carrier protein. Water will cross the cell membrane from an area of less negative water potential or higher water potential to a more negative water potential or lower water potential across a partially permeable membrane, and this process is known as osmosis. Water can directly move through the phospholipid bilayer. It is small and has a weak polarity, but to make it easier for water to diffuse through by osmosis into or out of the cell, they can also use a channel protein, and the name of that channel protein is called an aquaporin. So I'm just going to put it over there as a label for you as well. And in some cases, the cells may have to move particles against the concentration gradient, which means lower to higher concentration, and they use something called a pump protein. And that is known as active transport, and active transport also requires ATP as an energy molecule. So this is the summary of passive and active transport.